Hi, I'm Jeff Teeter. I'm a systems engineer with the America Partners Organization. And today we're going to review Lab 5 of the Cisco Open SDN Controller Hands-On Labs, specifically looking at the OpenFlow Manager. On this lab, there's uh, a lot of different things that we're going to do. Uh, one of the first things, so that we have Wireshark, is to go ahead and, and launch Ingsman. So this is an, an X11 server. This will allow us to launch um, Wireshark uh, from our Mininet connection. And what we'll go ahead and do is um, log on to Mininet. Let's see, open up a PuTTY connection. Okay. Okay, and we're locked on, or logged on. Uh, the important thing uh, when you're logging on uh, to Mininet, and I guess I should probably go ahead and show you, uh, when you have your PuTTY connection up, um, I already have it saved, uh, but besides the IP address and the SSH, you need to go down here uh, to the actual SSH and under the X11 um, tab or choice, uh, there, will, there will be a, a checkbox that you need to check that just says enable X11 forwarding. This is what allows uh, Wireshark to be launched. Uh, so let's go ahead and see if if I did that correctly. So sudo Wireshark Okay, and as you can see put this down here. We have Wireshark uh, started here. I can maybe, maybe I can get to it. There we go. Um, and what I'm going to do here is go ahead and, and, and start Wireshark. Go ahead and configure it first of all to go ahead and uh, uh, look for devices on Ethernet 0 and um, I'm going to set the capture filter uh, to look for open flow traffic. Uh, so that's going to be uh, TCP port 6633. Let's see. Just verify that TCP port 6633. We can go ahead and hit start, and it should go ahead and start collecting uh, the data. There's no packets going on right now because we haven't really uh, configured anything. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and, and spin some stuff up here. Uh, we're going to use Mininet to uh, spin up a series of switches, a total of five switches with uh, a host attached to each switch. Um, so the command is sudo mn. Uh, we give it a MAC attribute so that uh, we can easily tell which MAC address is tied to which switch. Um, going to go ahead and tell it to use a remote controller. In other words, have these switches uh, actually connect to our uh, open SDN controller. I'm going to go ahead and, and give it the address of the controller. And then we're going to go ahead and tell it what we want the topology to be. We want it to be a linear topology, uh, which is one of, the, one of the choices. It can also be like a tree or some type of custom. And then uh, we're going to tell it what, what protocol to use. In this case, we're going to tell it to use OpenFlow uh, 1.3. OK, I'll go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. Okay, 
So it looks like it's working. Let's uh, go ahead and go ahead and check Wireshark here. Oh, we see lots of traffic going on. So it looks like there's some communications that's occurring between. You see the addresses here of uh, 172.16.1.160, which is Mininet, and 172.16.1.200. Uh, so we definitely have a lot of traffic uh, that's going on. Looks like a couple, some retransmissions, uh, but so far it looks looks fairly well, or fairly fairly good. Uh, let's go ahead and see uh, what we have. If we see anything with the OpenFlow Manager yet, um, so let's go ahead and bring that up and go to the OpenFlow Manager. Okay. And it looks like we have uh, five switches, which that's exactly what we were uh, hoping for. And uh, you can see uh, which uh, switch. If you actually highlight one of the switch, you'll uh, you'll see the other switches that it's directly connected to, which uh, basically saying that this is a linear connection, which that's exactly what it is. Uh, we can go ahead and ask for it to display the hosts that are connected to the switches. Right now it's not uh, displaying anything. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go back and see if we can uh, generate some pings. Okay, so we've got some pings going on and this is basically uh, uh, the way you read this is this is a uh, host one and host one is going to ping host two, three, four, and five and it just goes right down the line. Host two will ping host one, three, four, five and uh, this is all going. So basically 20 pings and 20 are received so everything looks appropriate. Um, let me see if I can um, click out of here real quick and then go back and see if there's any difference at all. Okay, so now we can see uh, the actual host, and if you notice, uh, because we gave it the Mac ad, uh, Mac uh, configuration when we were configuring it, basically uh, the Mac addresses are really easy to see, since uh, one is one, and uh, host, the Mac address is basically ending in two that's connected to switch two, and, and vice versa, all the way down. And you can move these around if you want to make them a little bit easier to see. Uh, you can certainly do that. So, so far, uh, basically, we have an OpenFlow uh, network that's being controlled by the OpenSDN controller, um, and everything appears to be working correctly. And uh, we can, of course, look at Wireshark, and all the different packets are, are being collected um, just as you would expect. Now there's a lot of different ways to actually get information and do configuration, so we're going to just going to go ahead and take a look at a, a couple of them. Uh, one of the things you can do is just uh, from this basic view, there's multiple tabs here, from the basic view is just click on uh, one of the switches and uh, from here you can go ahead and, and look at different information, like you can look at flow stats uh, as far as uh, what's, a, what's actually occurring here. Um, let's go ahead and click flow ID and uh, byte count just so that we can get a little bit more information. And if you notice up here now we're actually seeing the byte count and the actual flow ID that identifies each flow, but uh, how many packets are actually uh, being sent uh, between the devices. Um, so that's uh, one way that you can do that. and. Uh, that automatically takes you to the statistics when you uh, when you click on that. But we can go back here to basic view and you can unhighlight it. Um, that's certainly one way you can do that. Besides using uh, the basic view, you can also uh, just basically uh, look at the flow management tab, and this automatically will uh, have a lot of information as far as uh, the different flows, how many flows are configured for each switch. Um, if there's any filters, there currently isn't, 
and this actually lists all of the different flows uh, that basically identifies from one device to the other uh, you know how that is actually being done Uh, so uh, one of the things that you can do is uh, basically filter this information which is basically just giving you a, a different view so we can create a filter if you'd like uh, so for example you could just click on um, uh, this filter button right here and it allows you to create a filter so we could call it uh, we'll call it oh, filter 1-switch1 and uh, we could uh, select a device, we'll just call it, uh, uh, or, or select the open flow one switch. And we have a lot of other properties that we could match on general properties. Um, we could match on ports, VLAN IDs, whatever it is that you're wanting to see as far as in that view. Because what we're doing now is we're just creating a filter to change the view that we're looking at. We're not really changing any aspect of the actual flow. Uh, so you can go ahead and actually uh, save the current filter or save an exit and then to actually um, put that uh, in force as you can see right now we're seeing a bunch of different devices here uh, we can actually activate that filter um, And by clicking on the activate button, um, this is basically a, uh, now it's only displaying uh, devices, or I should say flows that are related to OpenFlow 1. And we should be able to go back here and just basically deactivate the filter. And then now you're seeing all the flows, not just the ones that are on, on Flow 1. Okay. Uh, some of the other things that um, you can do is if you wanted to look at a specific flow, um, you can actually uh, click on the view button and this will uh, bring you up um, what the actual flow would look like. And this is describing, in this one, it's, it's showing the port in port is open flow 3, uh, 2 and an output of OpenFlow 3.3 and uh, you can actually hit a show preview and this will actually give you a uh, actual uh, REST um, XML documentation if you will of if you were to program this flow if you needed to program the flow this is exactly what you would need if you wanted to, to match everything exactly like what it is so it just gives you the ability to uh, see what flows are actually occurring and then you can actually look at it if you wanted to uh, uh, program a flow. It gives you a, uh, an ability to do that. So what we're going to do now using, uh, go back to flow management here, is uh, we've created uh, a filter and, and done that but now what we can do is we can actually uh, create flows um, and what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna first of all uh, let's take a look and look at the flows that are actually on the switch uh, so an easy way to do that would be just open up another putty connection to Mininet bigger here for you okay and what we're gonna do is basically look at the flows on a switch just to see uh, what they look like uh, so And 
what I'm basically typing in is we want to dump all the flows to the screen just to see what they look like uh, for switch one. I just want to take a look at switch one uh, if I've typed it correctly. Okay, so this these are all the flows that are actually uh, on switch one and as you can see um, a lot of different information. It's basically uh, giving it uh, source and destination. So for example on this one um, this is uh, from switch one to switch two and it's showing what the action is is to basically output it in other words uh, send it out the port and it, it has a cookie reference and it tells you how long the durations in there and what table it is and uh, the number of packets and bytes and all that kind of stuff uh, and it also has information on how to get to the controller um, and all of that uh, information so the reason I wanted to show you this is we're going to go ahead and um, actually um, take a look at creating a filter and blocking some traffic and then seeing you know exactly what happens uh, when we do that and, and how it's affected on the switch. So the other thing that we can uh, do is uh, if you wanted to verify how the network is actually laid out if we go back to um, the other Mininet uh, connection that's actually running the application Mininet at any time you can always type net and this should display to you all the different hosts and um, the switch loopback addresses and, and all of that information but this allows you uh, to know where the hosts are actually uh, attached to. Um, so in other words, host one is attached to switch one of uh, uh, Ethernet zero. Host two is the Ethernet zero of switch two. And you can go down that information, which is important. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a flow and actually block some of the traffic. Because right now, we're, uh, we're allowing any type of, of a traffic to occur. So if we do a ping all, as you can see, uh, it's it's still all hosts are able to ping all other hosts. So let's go ahead and go back to the OpenSDN controller. Uh, go ahead and create a, a, a flow to basically drop traffic instead of sending it. So we're going to go back to controller here and go to flow management. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a flow, so just the pencil icon, and uh, in this case we're going to let's drop or let's drop traffic uh, from host one that goes to um, another host, uh, maybe host five. So let's go ahead and select uh, host one. So uh, host one selected. For a table ID, uh, the table ID is just zero is the table that we're using. Uh, flow ID, just so that we can identify it real easy. We'll just enter something that, simple, so 777. Uh, for a priority, uh, the regular priority is 10, so we want something to take precedence over that, so we'll enter 20. Um, and then to identify uh, the flow fairly easy. Let's go ahead and add a cookie to it. So if you go over here to the left, uh, as you can see, and you just slide and it adds a cookie uh, field. And over here in the cookie, um, let's go ahead and add a 77 cookie. And then to identify which traffic to drop, Let's go ahead and add a source MAC address. We're going to match on a source MAC. And let's go ahead and uh, we said we were going to do uh, host 5, so we know what the MAC address is. It ends in 5. Okay. So that's five.
and then let's go ahead and everything should be done let's just do a show preview to see uh, what information or what this information actually looks like so this is a flow uh, has table ID uh, 777 the priority the cookie uh, the match uh, all of that information is is set um, but of course I don't think we actually gave it an action yet so let's uh, go back here let's exit out of that let's give it an action um, scroll down here because we actually want that packet to drop so let's go over here so action drop let's hit the show preview again which always is a good idea so any traffic uh, that matches basically a source address of coming from host 5 and we're sending this to, to host one. Uh, the action is to drop. We're going to drop that packet. Um, so that should go ahead and, and uh, take care of it. So let's exit out of here. Now, of course, you could copy that and and you could you know send it to the switch, but let's go ahead and just actually send the request from here. Um, and what we'll do is uh, just send the actual flow, send the request and we'll go up here and we'll see what the notification is. Uh, there's uh, a success of one, an error of zero, so it looks like it actually worked. Let's go ahead and go uh, back and see uh, the actual flow. So. Um, Just searching for uh, 77, uh, we see that uh, it's for OpenFlow 1, and it's actually on the device, uh, so it should actually uh, be taking place. So what we'll do is um, let's go back and see, first of all, if we can ping back to Mininet. If you remember before, we could ping just fine. And it looks like we're having a problem between right now host one and host five is airing out. It'll take just a second. And we'll probably have it uh, vice versa since ping is a, a two way process. Uh, you send it and you're expecting a response back, and we're going to drop uh, both of those uh, packets actually at uh, host one. And that's exactly what happened. Out of the 20 packets, only 18 were received and uh, the packets that were dropped were between uh, host 1 and host 5 and between host 5 and host 1. So the other thing that we can do which is I think pretty cool is we can go back and basically dump the flows to the screen again like we did uh, before and we should be able to actually see that flow we created. Oh, So it sh should be her and here it is. Um, I was just looking for the cookie that we created. Um, so basically here it is. Uh, it's basically matching on um, a destination source of five uh, or source of five to destination one and that's well that's a priority ten okay and then here we have here's the actual cookie right here 77 duration table um, and here's the source 5 with a priority of 20 so it's going to override uh, the other one and the action on this one is actually drop so this priority overrides uh, the other one which was the same source but because it's a higher priority and our action here is to drop it actually drops that packet so that's what's occurring. So um, as you can see, we were able to uh, not only uh, use the OpenSDN controller 
uh, to actually look at the uh, to actually look at the OpenFlow network, but we're able to actually uh, look at uh, the different flows. We can create flows. We can uh, program the flows to you know forward or drop or anything like that, um, and we can also um, we can use it to to get additional information. We can pull information up on the hosts on the host screen. It'll show us each of the hosts. Uh, where it's attached to, uh, the status, uh, it gives us the IP address, the MAC address, and w when it was last seen. And there's also some other um, parameters you can set on the OpenSDN controller uh, that I should probably mention. Right now it's in reactive mode. What that means is it will go ahead and build the flows based on uh, requests. So if it has a uh, uh, a host one is ping host three it will go ahead and build those flows and that's what actually happened if it was just in a proactive mode that means that you would actually have to manually build all the flows before anything would happen and then in an integrated mode it, it's kind of a combination of both it, it does both of those um, and then there's some other uh, parameters that you can set but I think the the big thing to um, to pull from this lab is the just the uh, tremendous power that you have as far as the visibility and the ability to actually uh, pull information and statistics and then also to do the actual configuration of the flows it makes it extremely easy uh, you still have that capability of using restconf and and different things um, to to change your flows but this uh, GUI interface makes it definitely very easy so in our next lab, uh, which is lab six, we'll be using the inventory manager. And uh, that's a short lab where basically we're just going to be looking at um, you know, what's attached to the SDN controller and, and the fact that you can drill down and, and stuff like that. Uh, so I look forward to the next lab. Thank you.